Thank you for that, Doreen. We now move along and get started with In the Headlines, where we get to have a quick look at the papers. We have four different dailies, the Daily Nation, the Standard, the Star, as well as the People Daily. The hashtag you can interact, uh, interact with us with. Hey, abo karibu ni changanike kidogo, lakini tumekata kazi ya saitan. The hashtag is Good Morning Kenya. At KBC Channel 1 is official station handle. Our individual handles ever remain to be at Ray Manyara, at Arena Range, at Victor Olo, and at Jane Wamboy. We start off with the Daily Nation. Very, very busy today. So many stories have been featured here on this particular daily. Um, Starting off with uh, some bit of politics, turmoil in Ruto camp. Now Deputy President allies are not about to fold their political parties to join UDA anytime soon. This story has been captured here on page six. Very briefly, um, there is conversation over split in Ruto camp over coalition stance and uh, in what has been termed as a storm that is brewing. Uh, the DPT, uh, uh, the DPT, the Deputy President's camp. Uh, um, he, the deputy president, has insisted that he will not sign any pre-election agreements with his allies who still subscribe to different parties. If they want any agreement moving forward, they ought to be fully affiliated with UDA or not. It's a do or die situation, an ultimatum for that matter. And some of those allies that are um, in DP's camp who have been angered by some of the other allies who are still affiliated with other parties insist that the only UDA should be the only party for deputy president's famed hustler nation movement. All others are considered illegitimate. That is what is happening in terms of um, the deputy president. Then still politics. The main read here on the front page of the Daily Nation. Battle of economic models. It has started. Now um, featured here we have a four of... Um, Party leaders, we have Deputy President William Ruto, ODM leader Raila Odinga, Kalonzo Mosioka, Waipa party leader, as well as Musalia Mudavadi, each of them with their own economic models and uh, proposing these models to be a fixer-upper for the country if they are to be elected as a president. Looking at deputy president, of course, has been famed by the bottom-up economic model. Uh, Raila Odinga um, and ODM, he is all about promoting rural economies, compulsory universal health care, and of course, the return of industries. Coming to Kalonzo Mosioka, who is the latest entrant when it comes to these economic models. He proposes a 24-hour economic uh, model saying it's the only way to ensure an industrialized nation. Kuna wanyanenge shift ya 8 a.m. To 8 p.m., then the next batch comes in and pushes through the entire night. A 24-hour economic model, and finally, Musale Mudavadi proposes Uchumi Bora um, economic model, which will focus on agriculture, entrepreneurship, youth employment, and industrialization. The battle of economic models. Now, coming to, of course, some sad news in regards to the passing of the now late Oria Rogomandule, a woman of many first she has been featured here on page 12 we'll be giving you those details once we get there and finally Chitembwe's 7 million now judges tell court that he planned to bank the cash for his fees. On the other hand, the DCI did um, say they have evidence that he had slashed this money as part of some of the projects that uh, the judiciary was involved in. That, in a nutshell, is the front page of the Daily Nation for you this 9th day of September 2021. Victor. Absolutely. And just before I take that, I think it's also prudent to appreciate our viewers who mm. are tuned in. Uh, we have got Ben Okinda, Wood Bigori, the son of Bigori. Uh, I think he's watching from Godkweru, Kababa, fully tuned in from Naivasha. Say good morning. Philemon Kiprono, good morning. Watching live from Iten Elgio Marakwet. Thank you, Philemon. Uh, Denisco Jesambai Proricchio. I hope I got Wait. it right. Good morning. Watching live from Chesambai areas. Victor Marcia. All right. Good morning. Watching the show from Alego Siaya County. Thank you so much. Isaiah Ombura. Watching live from Mombasa CBD. Fred Manyeni. Um, watching from Masaba area. This must be in Kisi region. Uh, Josphat Omosa. 
Good morning. Watching live from Babadogo in Nairobi. Uh, Philbath Simon. I'm watching live from Mwanza in Tanzania. Good one. What's All right. up? Yeah. Uh, we also have Helen Nyakianda Juguna. The theme Munyu well represented and the show continues on and on and on. There's a gentleman, I think this must be from Uganda as well, Asante Sana, uh, Webalenyo, County number 39, Abut Water, and thank you so much for watching. We'll be taking your, you know, shout outs and tell us where you're watching from. Uh, before I go to the newspaper, let me ask you a question. Did Today I is didn't. Thursday, your TBT. What was one thing that you remember? In high school whether you went in high school to high school in 1980 1991 what's that one thing that you remember in high school let's go back to school okay not too much to ask for for me I remember was our first weekend we were caned the entire from 1g <laughs> we each for the first Sunday the late teacher man called all the entire form one G Akachupeleka Akasema a form one is making noise on a Sunday morning. Audacity. Audacity. We were all caned. <laughs> Zablo Naroko, you'd know what happened if you're watching the show, bro. <laughs> Way. It was in um uh something like uh tracksuit, so you can imagine. Yes, the cane. <laughs> what do you remember back in Me, high school? Let's I talk about that. I remember Sundays. Yes. The dining hall was actually a very busy place because it was a Dining hall was the best Mayai. building. Oh, my eye. Uh, eggs were only served on Sundays. So <laughs> all of us would make sure that at least Sunday you don't miss a meal. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So our viewers, what, what do you remember? High school. Whether we talk a high school just the other day. Or not. <laughs> or not. Uh, you came out of high school way back 30, 40 years ago. At least there's something you remember. <laughs> I'm not alluding anything to anyone in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> These 12 years. I'm passing that. <laughs> I don't know what you think, uh, well, Regina. Hmm? High school. <laughs> in one second. <laughs> that good thing. That one, that one, one or bad thing in high school. Regina is still thinking. Jen? Good or bad? Uh, uh, yeah, Regina, I'm going to be here. Yeah. But from hey, high school... I have experience Muzuri sana. Yeah, yeah Regina. <laughs> By chance, I woke up tomorrow morning and I found myself in, in high school. In this dormitory? I'm done. Like, yeah. my life is over. I can never go back to high school. <laughs> so you do not even want to remember a thing? The only... What did I like about high school? Yes. Finishing high school? Cold. Probably. <laughs> and maybe on Saturday when the lights went off and people were from the canteen having mm. bought bread. Cold power. Because I was locked out from buying bread, mm. they were scared of me. So when the lights went off, I would pick the bread that they have left. <laughs> That's so. gangsta. Now, now we know. I've always been know. gangsta. Yeah. Now we gangsta. know the power. Where the power began. The end justifies the means. Allah. Hmm? There was bread there and people disappeared. Uh -huh. The nam kate. Quick fast. Surviving. <laughs> <laughs> Mina tembea tu si ni konyuma yao singeenda mbele yao unajua mazika are you a nocturnal visitor na started day steam ilikuwa inapotea na wamenunua mkate na mimi sikuwa naweza kununua mkate so no. so ulikuwa unajua steam inapotea saturday itapotea tukienda dom na wamebeba okay. mikate naenda nikikusanya sande mimi nauza haya hai tunakusanya kama si moja nauza ai carrie naeka kwa bucket wao wamebeba bucket ya maji na mkate mimi nimebeba an empty bucket ehe inaenda kujazwa mkate mkate sande ninauza pesa ya kupiga si ehe ehe biashara enye ndio maana she's a business anchor slash reporter we understand pesa ni muhimu regina went to school to study life skills eh man you gotta survive started started from the bottom now she's here not just to pass exams eh ni choma picha like no but it's business it is well but see you are here you are here you know regina hmm? ni sisi ndio tuko <laughs> ah, by the way <laughs> what what you talk honest ni sisi ndio tuko <laughs> okay uh what jen what do you remember high school high school for me was it wasn't high it wasn't low mm -hmm. it was pretty normal um i went to one school from one to from four mm -hmm. um became 
sasa sikia u director wangu i had a pretty normal high school experience i think mm. the highlight was during the game season yeah. i was the basketball captain um assistant captain in form 3 form 4 became the captain basketball Ni, was mchezo eh mimi nilipenda mchezo <laughs> <laughs> nilikuwa captain wa dom nilikuwa captain wa basketball uh -huh. na assistant wa volleyball wow mm. okay so i had a very pleasant ex i didn't have those weird weird experiences za kuiba mkati yeah. kwa giza za regina na kuiba kwa bucket please i i never stole <laughs> okay i collected you, you took from okay. the no In i the collected dark. That's the term. Okay. I, I collected I, from the ground. I, I hope I hope all boys who went to boys schools or even the mixed school there is this thing called chukua kijiko peleka kwa mama mandazi mpate kijiko chukua mandazi ama mkate ama chapo and ukunywe uji na go to class. Kuiba sabuni na kijiko was out of the day. What? Yes, literally. Unacha? Oh yes. Like kijiko, kijiko would disappear. Oh. Hmm? Hey. Vijiko disappear. <laughs> oh, also highlight ya nini? Yeah. High school. Yes. Unakumbuka mkarango? Did any of you used to eat karango eh? And uh, na karanga kitungu home it, na it dania. Sablenya. Si kwa naitwa yeah. mkarango. Alafu naweka kwa container. <laughs> kwa container ya, unabeba. Ya Unapeleka. Eh, eh, sasa kukula unachukua unaweka alafu spices. But eh. there was one danger to that kama wewe ni kijana ule au penangi you don't give your friends that's a blenya my friend one day utapata <laughs> moto sablenya what kind of name is that yes ai somebody would come and take your box and akoroge okay <laughs> so unatoka class upata the entire imepigwa butterfly imepigwa butterfly <laughs> imeinuka hapo or they shake your box you can imagine that mess in your box Man. because you don't give your friends that sablenya okay on that note let's just take a break and hey. then when we come back i'll take you straight to the star and show you what's happening on that newspaper stay with us and welcome back and we're glad you're still watching the show all right still uh, straight to the star newspaper here on the front page why guru jitas signal major shifts in central why Guru Jitas signal major shift in central political uncertainty sweeps through Mount Kenya region as DP Ruto and ODM leader Raila Odinga battle for the vote rich region. Uh, Governor hinted she may dump Kenyatta's party. That is what's on the front page of the star here. And again, um, other story that uh, I know is also I highlighted on all the papers of uh, the passing on of Orie Rogomanduli, who died yesterday at her home. Uh, also, uh, it's on the front page there. You can take a look at that story. MP threatened to abandon Kalonzo if he backs Raila. That's MPs threatened to abandon Kalonzo if he backs Raila. Wiper leader Kalonzo Musyoka's troops have threatened to abandon him if he backs ODM boss Raila Odinga's presidential bid. Um, the threats triggered speculation that the two leaders could be plotting a reunion to face Deputy President William Ruto on a joint ticket. Um, that is also a story that you worth reading. Vehicle used to transport bodies produced in court. A vehicle allegedly uh, alleged to have been used to transport the body of the bodies of uh, lawyer Willie Kimani, his client and taxi driver, was yesterday brought to court. And um, the Nissan Wingrod uh, is among three vehicles that police checked and were in uh, were of interest in the murder of the three victims. Okay, so there's a story again of uh, uh, Justice Chitembe saying that the 770,000 shillings handed to cops was my son's tuition fee and uh, he says that uh, he said it is not unusual as his family operates a dollar account judge Chitembe questioned why uh, police suspected him of fraud when they found him with seven thousand dollars that is about seven hundred and seventy thousand kenyan shillings in his pocket when he was arrested alongside justice agri muchelule the cash was in his pocket and he voluntarily surrendered it to police although it was to be used to pay his son's fees at edith cowan university path in australia that is according to him okay still on uh, the issue of lykipia 
uh, land thirsty politicians to blame for Laikipia clashes. Uh, Natembea says that uh, land ownership at the center of violence, that is the Rift Valley Regional Commissioner, uh, saying that the ongoing violence in Laikipia is instigated by politicians and other powerful people in the community. That is according to Natembea. He said that conflict is part of a bigger plan of creating insecurity and evicting legal landowners from that area. We had that discussion last uh, yesterday with him and he said that uh, they're going to move in pretty fast to bring sanity and calm in that particular area. All right, and before I hand it over, Gashago forced me to sign 123 million shillings payment papers. And Jagi says that he was forced to sign a feed of it without his consent, knowledge of contents. Uh, he's, uh, this man called Jimmy Carter said that he was um, a man claiming he was conned out of 123 million shillings by Madira MP Rigadi Gashagwa has claimed he was recently forced to sign an affidavit indicating the cash was paid into his bank accounts. Uh, Jim Katanjagi had earlier his, uh, this year told the High Court that Gashagwa talked to him out of 123 million shillings by pretending he would help him fund a project. Now, the project was for the supply of hospital operating theater, ICU, and maternity equipment to Bungoma County. So he said that he was forced to sign 123 payment papers. I will hand it over before we move on to the next stage. Regina. Hmm. Matters of politics, and I've heard you talk about, you know, Kalonzo, why is Kalonzo. Now he finds himself on the front page of the Standard this morning. And the question is, what a Kalonzo 2022 bid means? What does it mean? Is it a king or kingmaker? That's what we have on the kicker with nearly 2 million votes. If his eastern region backyard fully backs him, the former VP is on the horns of dilemma whether to go for the country's top job or play the kingmaker. We have Raila Odinga um, risks a repeat of the 2007 experience when he missed out on full benefits of a united Kalonzo Musioka support. Gideon Moy with a Kalonzo presidential run, a run on the cards and Kanu's boss allies hinting at a big announcement. All eyes will be on his next move. Deputy President William Ruto. Raila's loss of Eastern voting bloc would be music to his ears. A divided opposition, uh, a divided opposition to his ticket would be God sent. Then Musalia Mudavadi of ANC, the strong resolve by the Wiper leader may put the wind in his sails, but may not. You know, may put the wind on his sails, yes, but may also accord him a wider negotiation space. That is what, in a nutshell, a Kalonzo 2022 bid me means and this is according to this particular scribe we are not saying that this is what is going to happen remember we also welcome your feedback in regard to these matters and others that you're going to continue highlighting you can reach us on twitter at kbc channel one news that is what we have on the front page uh, of the standard this morning including the fact that uh, a majority of the upper class or what what we refer to uh elites is uh, banking more and they're banking in dollars that's a report uh in as far as business is concerned then also matters of security what is happening down in Laikipia there an easy calm in Laikipia as leaders are seized we had that story and it's also available on our website in summary that's what we have on the front page of the standard this morning all right we have uh, been hearing a lot of cases of uh primary school children and also sec secondary either committing suicide or even disappearing. There was one particular case which really dominated the social media platform just about two days ago of a St. George's girl who went missing. However, reports shows that she was found. And this a similar incident also happened in Gatanga. This story actually finds its way on the front page of the People's Daily. And uh, this uh, girl, that was a standard, standard eight pupil who committed suicide, just highlighting that 
she had been sent home to collect the parents because she had not completed her assignment. However, they're still and uh, doing investigations to just ascertain properly perhaps if, if there were any other reasons that would have made her to commit suicide aside from that assignment beat. We also have universities are now urged to invest in um, herbicide research that is in Nakuru County. Again, the article continues to highlight better still, a uh, better well, how they need, why they need to actually invest in herbicides and how important that needs for, uh, that, that is for most of these universities in that particular county. Coming to politics, Kamba lawmakers now threaten to abandon Kalonzo if he backs Raila Odinga. This was actually made in a statement at Parliament Buildings by Kitui Senator, that is Eno Kwambua, who mentioned that after reports showed that uh, perhaps he could be planning to back the former premier, yet the Kamba lawmakers are not in support of that. In fact, a number of them saying that he is well eligible to just stand alone for that 2022 um, elections. And um, we heard of the dailies also the issue of drought the president declared it a national disaster and this was also just this also came out on tuesday by the devolution cabinet secretary the secretary that is eugene wamala who had also asked the government to just disperse some funds to those affected areas key among them being garissa mandera as well as other 10 more counties and that also a bit alluded to the fact that if perhaps the short rains are going to be missed in the month of october and november which was something that the med department had, had mentioned this is what would re lead to this drought that perhaps you're already experiencing and even furthermore that perhaps you know happens and that is why also that uh, the president declared this as a national disaster and also there are just various other things that the government is trying to do to ensure that at least they protect Kenyans and the issue of food security is well taken care of. We also have the two MPs who are arrested over violence we had that in the GMK news briefs and of course that story to do with Orie Rogo Manduli being termed as that woman of many firsts Yes, that is on the front page of the People's Daily. <coughs> Looks like. All right, let's now get to some of these details as we had earlier on promised you in regards to some of the stories that have been making headlines. Um, just to quickly take you through these stories that are here, there's one story that has been featured here on page three of the Daily Nation. The numbers man whose divine calling is foretelling COVID waves. Okay. So he says it is very easy to predict um, the next COVID-19 wave. Um, and this is his divine calling. He has this divine gifting to sort of foretell when there's going to be another pandemic. Uh, but the mathematician whose models have um, correctly predicted COVID-19 waves in the country says the reverse is true when it comes to what he does. And it takes him many sleepless nights before he gets that aha moment to realize when the next wave is going to happen so in his own words he said i wanted to be a medical doctor uh, mechanical engineer and uh I've, at least my odds fell in place uh, a lawyer he's 39 years he's an a student um uh, he got an A, by the way, in his KCSE. Despite excelling in sciences, he was called to study a Bachelor's of Education. So much has been said about this, but from what he says, um, he looks at everything and uh, sort of takes a step back or re shrinks back to his space to sort of understand what he's being told or what is being um, what information is being uh, given to him divinely to know when the next variant is or rather the next um, wave is going to come in and he correctly predicted the third wave between February and July when the Delta variant was dominant Wow and that story has actually been featured on this entire page right here um, that that's that's that in regards to that um quickly moving on to the next one in regards to uh Chitembe. that story has also been featured here on uh, page eight quickly highlighting um the new uh statements that he actually said saying that um dci are now twisting facts to justify his arrest alongside justice uh, muchelule in an affidavit he said that um he willingly surrendered this seven thousand uh, dollars which translates to seven hundred and seventy thousand kenya shillings and in that particular uh, document uh, it indicated that the money was meant for his son's school fees and uh, it further on went to state that he 
and his wife um, do operate a dollar account to be able to pay um, school fees for their son in an Australian university. And he was actually look, well, on his way to a bank. He intended rather to go to a bank to seek assistance on how he would deposit this money directly into the school's account as per his son request but now um he says that the dci are twisting facts by claiming um that uh, they have information that the two judges has had slashed this money from a justice for scale scheme in their offices and they also went as far as um questioning the drivers and personnel that are associated to these two judges to just try and get more information out of them in regards to this. So that is where we are when it comes to this particular case concerning uh, High Court Judge Juma Chitembwe. Vic. All right. Some politics. Um, is it a case of blackmail? DP wasted Jubilee first term in deals, says Raila. Odium leader says Ruto held his boss Uhuru hostage and the March 9th, 2018 handshake provided relief to the president. Odium leader Ilodinga has hit out at Deputy President William Ruto, accusing him of wasting Jubilee's first term in cutting deals, quote-unquote, and blackmailing the president, Raila claimed the DP frustrated his boss, President Kenyatta, and that uh, the March 9th, 2018 handshake provided relief to the head of state. That is, uh, according to Raila, he was speaking when he received defectors at Chunga House, where Raila said the situation could have worsened if it did not come together with Uhuru to bring the country together through the handshake. All right, so... There's that story of Kalonzo. Will Kalonzo deputize Raila? Allah is threatened to abandon him. Um, again, this is something that we have discussed here. We discussed here with our political analysts, remember? And we just looked at the possibility of these politicians coming back to work together. Let's just leave it at that. We'll talk about it at the right time. Okay, complaints against police raised by uh, rise by 84 percent from 2011. That is according to IPOA. Complaints against police officers has increased by 83.4 percent in a decade. The Independent Policing Oversight Authority has said in a document presented to the Senate Committee, IPOA said that the cases have increased from 594 in 2012 to 3,583 in 2021 of the cases, 22 are filed during the COVID-19 period. So there is that, uh, there's this case here, retirement packs for lawmakers blocked. Senators reject bill that gave gratuity to all legislators. Uh, the move could have triggered yet another war between the Senate and the National Assembly. The Senators have declined to process the National Assembly's Parliamentary Pensions Amendment Number no. 3, 2019, for lack of concurrence. Now, the bill seeks to, among other things, to give gratuity to all legislators, including those who have served for only one term or less. Now, let me break it down for you. Had it been passed, gratuity payments for members of parliament would have risen to 1.8 billion shillings when the term of the 12th parliament ends, an increase of 844 million shillings. The increase, uh, the payments, uh, oh, again, would rise to 2.2 billion and the 2.4 billion shillings in the subsequent fiscal year with the monthly pension bill set to rise to 266 million shillings so this is how it would have gone even so members of parliament would who choose to be paid a pension stand to get a lifetime monthly pay of 125,000 shillings should they choose to exit after they serve two terms. Remember in Kenya, we don't have a uh, term limit for members of parliament. So after two terms, if you decide to say, this is it, um, then you'd be allowed to pocket 125,000 shillings. That is if this bill would have sealed through. Regina. Well. Let's now look at matters education. Remember, this is a uh, CBC has been the talk of town, so to speak, in as far as parents are concerned. And we understand the LSK um, 
chair there, Nelson Harvey, is going to be going to court uh, in regard to that part of the just try and, you know, put the government on notice in regard to how expensive uh, CBC is becoming to a majority of parents. Now, before we get to court matters and what is happening there, remember we expect that this is going to be filed soon, if not today by the end of this week. There's a special report that indicates that government has no plans to build new classrooms for junior secondary learners. And this is what an earlier report had uh, recommended additional space uh, to accommodate the 2023 double intake in secondary school. Yeah. Now, more than 2.5 million uh, students are expected to enroll against the available spaces of just over 1 million. 2023 is a set deadline we the spaces um uh, 1.4 million spaces the expected shortfall of places for secondary school when grade six joins junior secondary school in 2023 remember the remnants of 844 system are still going on with their education we have embraced uh, cbc we're going to be having these students all transit to secondary school in the next one one two years to come that is 2023 but are we ready so 4,000 classrooms that's the total number of classrooms that have been planned for against the required 37,000 so what recommendations have been made to ensure that we transit seamlessly in 2023 so a part of the immediate plans that have been put in place uh, to prepare for the double intake in the CBC re uh, report uh, is a proposal of mapping primary schools against secondary schools with an aim of encouraging day schooling to address the transition challenge right so what this means is that if this is actually taken up we will have a majority of these students joining secondary being day scholars then this brings to the question where are these schools has this child been in boarding school somewhere? Uh, are they moving to a secondary school that they can get to each and every morning? Transition headache ahead of that. The report also proposes making provision of primary schools that have adequate infrastructure to establish a junior secondary school. So if your child is studying in a school that has the requisite space and infrastructure, you might just as well have them transitioning from primary school to junior secondary school within the same learning institution. That is just but a sneak peek of the CBC report that projects that 1.2 million learners presently in grade 5 will join universities in 2029. Yes. So that's the story that we have on the special report, that the CBC report. And still talking about, you know, Matters close to our heart, away from matters uh, education. Now, statistics are out about the heavy burden of child abuse. Now, this is a survey that was taken uh, among uh, children aged between the age of 13 to 17. So, this is a report. Less than 10% of the affected children receive professional help. And I want to zero in on some of the highlights so one incidences of child sexual abuse by gender their cases one to three girls is a victim of child abuse while one the ratio is one to five where boys are concerned now the major perpetrators of child sex abuse for girls unwanted sexual touching 27 percent the key perpetrators are friends stroke classmates for boys it is 35.9 percent where the key perpetrators are intimate <coughs> partners and i want to take you back to the survey and the age bracket 13 to 17. now the first incident of an unwanted sexual touching for girls it's 33 percent while traveling on foot, walking to school, walking to the shop, walking to church and such. Mm. For boys, it is 29.1% that this unwanted sexual touching happens for boys at home at a percentage of 29.1. Unwanted attempted sex. 
For girls, the percentage stands at 28.9%, and the key perpetrators are relatives. For boys, the same unwanted attempted sex, it is at 31%, and the key perpetrators are friends stroke classmates. The first incident of unwanted attempted sex. For girls, it is at 42.2% while traveling on foot. For boys, it is 40.8% in school. So, in a nutshell, girls are more, are more at risk of this child sexual abuse while walking on foot and while at home whereas boys are at more are at, are, at, are at risk more when in school 35.9 percent where key perpetrators are intimate partners that is unwanted sexual touching for boys 31 percent of uh, first incident of unwanted sexual touching for boys the key perpetrators are friends and classmates and 40.8 percent the first incident of unwanted attempted sex for boys happens in schools sobering eh those are sobering statistics there and now we're talking about schools and I'd want to rope you in Jane, Doreen, as well as Victor. The issue of bullying. The issue of bullying over the years has uh, metamorphed to other issues. Sodomy, mm -hmm. you know, rape and such. Victor, what is your take in regard to that? Because this bullying has been used, you know, to transit from one to form two and such. Some schools will keep mum about these incidences, but we have students who are suffering. What is your take in regard to that issue, especially where boys are concerned? Because we're talking about the first incident of unwanted attempted sex for boys. It is at 40.8%, and this is happening in school. Victor, Ooh. as we wow. proceed with the rest. Um, this is a debate that uh, we can have for a very, very long time. Apparently, we are running out of time. But the fact is, cases of sexual abuse is something that uh, is not new to us, new to the country. Reports have been given over and over again. But then, it comes to, um, it, to everybody's knowledge that men or boys rarely talk about sexual abuse. But when they come to talk about it, it somehow doesn't trigger a lot of debate because you know men are considered to be strong and they're supposed to be strong so they have that bitterness and that rage they have you know withdrawal symptoms each and every time of their lives and it affects their well-being so from the statistics it's our trend jane this legitimately scares me to the core as a parent Yeah, that's Jen. <laughs> <laughs> to read. Evil too. For me, I think just the way Victor is saying that when you look at those statistics, much as from what you've read, Ray, the girls are, look like to be the ones more affected. But when it comes to the boys and the issue of talking about it, sometimes there's that aspect of judging. And that's why some would shy away from even having such kind of conversations. How about you make these spaces safe to have these conversations, either in school, at home, whichever place? Because the sad thing is that it has been happening. It is happening. And if perhaps do nothing about it, it will continue happening. Mm. Good. Right. Now, according to stakeholders, as we come to a close, they're saying seeking justice for sexual and gender-based violence has been affected by fear of the judicial process and stigma from society. Let's talk about it. Let's protect our children. Hmm. They are the custodians of the present and the future. Enjoy your viewing. I'm Regina Manyara. We take a quick break. We'll be right back.